New year, new exploits. This is actually uh, the first red team video I've done in quite a while. And uh, the reason that I wanted to make a video is because I actually was reading a blog post by Rhino Security Labs um, that details this new attack vector for phishing emails that can be used to harvest uh, credentials, essentially, when a user does click on a malicious document. Uh, and what it does is it basically exploits um, the fact that you send an NTLM hash when trying to access a UNC path. Now, if my UNC path in my document is located on a server that I control outside of the target company's organization or their network, um, then I can actually listen for those hashes. And once I grab those hashes, then I can obviously uh, brute force them and use them to log in and do anything a normal user could do with legitimate credentials. So obviously this is uh, a fairly uh, nefarious technique and uh, the video demonstration here will show you how easy it really is. So subdocument, um, that is part of this exploit where it's basically a document that is linking to something elsewhere and that goes back to the UNC path that I was discussing earlier. Um, so basically what this whole thing is, is based on the premise that we could have a subdocument located elsewhere. Um, so a couple things, my test lab environment is uh, a series of virtual machines as usual. Um, so this one right here is a domain controller, uh, and this one right here is just a client that is uh, domain joined and logged in with a user that belongs to the hash test domain. Um, so basically, in order for us to start our attack, this right here is going to be uh, basically our target. Um, and what I'm going to want to do is, first of all, I need to grab a specific tool. Uh, and that is part of the proof of concept code on the Rhino Security Labs GitHub. Uh, and that can be found here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to view this in raw. And then I'm going to go over to a uh, terminal window and download this to my subdocs folder. Da -da -da. Okay. Cool. So I have my document here, pre underscore subdoc dot doc x. Uh, and I'll show you that is just a Word document that I pre created uh, and it doesn't have anything in it except for this string of text here. So basically, what I'm going to do is use this Python script that I downloaded from Rhino's GitHub uh, and run it against this document. And I can actually do that in the same window here. And the syntax for that is as follows. And the output is just going to be post sub doc dot doc x. And we're going to output, or we're going to add our UNC path, which is going to be the IP address of a different server that we as the attackers actually own. So this is, uh, this is just a VPS that I have. And in order to get the IP address there, I can do a simple curl icon has ip.com. So that's the IP address. Uh, and I'm going to enter that here uh, and then sub dot test D100. And this is just the syntax provided in the actual blog post, but I can run that. Um, oh, it needs me to install this. So I'm going to have to do that with pip. So you'll see that I have a new file called post subdoc uh, and basically this is going to be what we send to um, the victim. Uh, now normally this would be done over email um, in this demonstration I just simply need to get that over to the VM. There are lots of ways to do this. I know you can copy and paste between host and guest and all that but I never have a ton of luck with it so I do some crazy roundabout way uh, that I'm going to show you right now. It might be a nifty trick but uh, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this folder into a uh, .iso file and then mount it in the VM and then I'll have those files as the CD drive. So I'm going to do that with a tool called Gen ISO Image. So I need to download that real quick. Okay, so now that that's downloaded, the syntax for the actual command is just Gen ISO Image and then our output file is just going to be mount .iso 
and then the folder is just going to be the, this folder so you can just give it a period so now you see we have our mount.iso file and I can go over to my VM and and here's my file you can open that and my files will now appear in the CD drive so again this is a crazy roundabout way of doing this I know normally you can drag and drop but I never have a ton of luck with that with vSphere so again I'm just trying to get the file on the system and now we have it on the system so this is my malicious document instead of just double clicking on it right now however I need to set up responder to listen uh, for SMB traffic and hopefully an NTLM hash. So I'm going to go back over to my VPS uh, and this is where Responder comes into play. So I need to go back over here and we're going to do uh, just copy this. Make sure you have git installed on your VPS and go to the OPT directory. Uh, there's nothing in here so I'm just going to do a sudo git clone. Okay, so now I have a responder directory. I can go into that, see what we have. So now I can just run responder and then our interface is going to be eth0. Oh, I need to install Python first. So now that Python is installed, uh, we can go ahead and run Responder with the following syntax and go over to our victim machine who has just downloaded this from an email and of course is going to open our malicious document uh, without knowing that it's malicious. And immediately you see that the password hash shows up on our attacker infrastructure. Uh, again, this is for the NTLM guy account which is an active directory account on the hash test domain and as you could see all that was required was opening this document um, I imagine in some organizations the enable content block is in place and in that case you would actually the user would actually have to hit enable content uh, in this case with a default configuration of office that was not required as you just saw so what do you do with the hash? Well, basically you can take it offline and use some type of brute forcing against it uh, until you're able to get this in clear text. And once you have that information, then you can obviously use it um, to log in as the user and pretty much have access to anything that they would have access to. So it's definitely pretty scary. So I wanted to close the video with giving some examples on how to actually thwart this kind of attack. Uh, basically, it's taking advantage of the fact that outbound SMB traffic is allowed from an organization. So if you were to want to block this, which you should, um, then it would, be, it would be of best interest to take a look at this Microsoft uh, guide here for blocking firewall ports to prevent that type of traffic. So if this was prevented uh, at the edge in your organization, then yes, the request would be made uh, for that sub-document. However, that traffic would not be able to uh, exit your organization and thus the hash would never be captured. Um, again, I wanted to thank Rhino Security Labs for this awesome uh, proof of concept tool and the write-up on their blog. Um, and I hope that you found this video informative and hopefully somewhat useful in your red team activities. Thanks.